Okay, welcome back. Uh, last time we looked at uh, this business of Lagrange interpolation. Now, what I want to do this time is sort of give another example of uh, the basic idea that went into the solution of the, the interpolation problem. Okay. So, let me just call this uh, the, the 0, 1 idea. So, in various contexts in which it appears, it goes under. Uh, so, you will see terms like duality or orthogonality and so on mentioned. So, these are all words which will sort of appear whenever you know this idea is, is uh, used in various places in mathematics. Now, let us just call it the 0 1 idea for now uh, and we will look at an example of this. So, what is the 0 1 idea? What do I mean by that? In order to solve the, the interpolation problem, you were given d plus 1 points and we solved it by first doing the following. We uh, found polynomials which were 0 everywhere else except at a single point where it was a 1. Okay? And the final answer was more or less obtained by combining these various polynomials. Now, let us do a similar thing in a different context. Now, uh, for this example, it will require a little bit of recall of what vectors meant and you know what vectors are in, in three dimensions. So, I would not really go into all of uh, you know the entire theory of vectors, just recall the basic things that I need. So, here is the typical picture I have. So, this is what you call R 3, R stands for the real numbers, R 3 is just three dimensional space. So, I have three dimensions and what is a vector? So, what is a point in R 3? A point typically is given by three coordinates x, y and z. So, I have a point and the position vector of that point. So, by the position vector, I just mean well I join the origin to that point. So, let us call the origin as O and the position vector of the point A is just well we say it is it is more or less this, this ray which points from the origin to the point A. So, the position vector, so A is the point and its position vector if you wish is just is usually denoted O A, it is the ray from the origin to that point. Okay, so, now here is what I want to do. I okay, So, maybe we will just give an example of this. So, if a point is uh, let us say A is let us say the point 2 1 minus 4, then the position vector of A is usually written as follows in vector notation. We say it is 2 times i cap plus j cap minus 4 k cap is the conventional way of writing this where what are i j and k they just refer to the the unit vectors along the x y and the z directions right so this is the usual notation so i have i which is along the x j which is the unit vector along the y and k which is the unit vector along the z directions now there are natural operations that one can perform on on vectors so there are two of them called dot and cross product. So, for now let us just recall what the dot product of vectors meant of two vectors. Well, it is given by the following thing. Let us again just do it by example, just recall what dot product means. So, suppose I have a vector say 2 i, let us even take the one that we wrote down plus j minus 4 k that is a vector. So, dot product sometimes also called the scalar product dot with let us say 3 i plus 5 j plus 7 k. Here is another vector. The dot product of these two vectors is defined to just be you, you sort of do the following. You multiply the x components together. There is 2 times 3 plus the y components are 1 and 5, 1 times 5 plus the z components are minus 4 times 7. And so, the whatever that is. So, that is 6 plus 5, 11 minus 28. So, that is going to be minus 17. Okay. So, that is the, the definition of the dot product. And recall again that the dot product has contained some geometrical information regarding the angles and lengths of vectors. Okay. So, here are two vectors. The dot product sort of encodes some information about the angle between them and what their lengths are and so on. Now, what I want to pose is a is a problem 
of the following kind. So, I want to take three points in R 3. So, I have uh, well here I have, I have a point A, I want two more points B and C. So, what you are given are three points in R 3. So, given three points C in R 3 and what else? Well, uh, so I might want some restrictions, I want them to be sufficiently independent in some sense, but let us not worry too much about these things right now. So, given three points in R 3 and three real numbers and three real numbers. Okay, so, what shall we call them A, B, C just arbitrary real numbers. So, here is the problem given three points in R 3 and given three real numbers A, B and C find a point D in R 3 such that it is satis satisfying the following conditions. The position vector of D has prescribed dot products with these three other position vectors. So, I have three position vectors O A, O B and O C. I want O D to have dot product A with O A, dot product B with O B <coughs> and dot product <coughs> C with O C. Okay. So, again it is sort of like the polynomial condition. I have you know three, three given vectors and I want the dot product to be certain values at those three points. So, let us see what would what would the 0 1 idea refer to in this context? It is the following let us before we solve the general problem in the earlier case we sort of found those special polynomials right. So, similarly here let us solve a special version of this problem. So, let us solve the case when A is 1 and B and C are both 0. So, let us do the following let us solve this problem. when well a equals 1, b equals 0, c equals 0. In other words, I want to find a point d such that the vector, the position vector of d has inner product has dot product 1 with O A and has dot product 0 with the other two fellows. Okay. So, that is the first thing. So, let us call the solution as the point d that you get let us call the solution uh, I do not know instead of D let us call it D 1. So, similarly I will let us solve another problem let us find a point D whose dot product is 1 with O B and 0 with the other two vectors. Okay. So, suppose we can solve this problem call the solution as D 2 and we solve the third problem which is dot product 0 with the first two vectors and 1 with the third vector and call that solution as D 3. Okay. So, instead of solving the general problem we solve three simpler problems. Okay. We find D 1, D 2 and D 3 <coughs> whose dot products are zeros and 1s right that is sort of what the 0 1 idea means. Now, suppose we could do this we still do not know how to do this, but assuming we could do this Then here is how we solve the general problem. <coughs> the solution to the general problem by which I mean the original problem with the three given real numbers A, B and C. How do you solve the, the original problem if you know these three solutions is the following you just take is the following solution to the general problem is given by. So, you take you define the position vector O D as you have three position vectors O D 1, O D 2 and O D 3 you just take a linear combination you say it is A times this plus B times that ok. 
okay. So, I have these 3 points d 1, d 2, d 3 and here is the linear combination a, b and c where those are the given 3 numbers. This linear combination we claim is going to be a solution to the, the general problem. Okay. So, let us check this, let us check that this is in fact true. So, what, what do we need this point d to satisfy? It needs to have prescribed dot products with O A, O B and O C. So, let us compute what is O D dot product with O A. Let us see whether this answer is exactly A. So, observe what is the property of D 1. Okay. So, D 1 I said is a solution to the problem when A equals 1, B equals 0, C equals 0. Okay. So, what does this mean? By saying that the solution is D 1, it means that D 1 has the following property. The position vector O D 1 has dot product 1 with O A and 0 with the other 2 fellows. That is what D 1 does. So, let us compute this. So, O D dot O A would be O D 1 dot. So, it is A times O D 1 dot O A b times o d 2 dot o a and c times o d 3 dot o a. Okay, and observe that you know sort of again by doing the same thing for d 2 and d 3 that this would be a 1 this this dot product is a 1 while the other 2 dot products are in fact zeros. So, it is plus b times 0 plus a c times 0. So, the answer is exactly a. So, similarly if you worked out what the dot product of O D with O B was, then only the second term would give you a 1 whereas, the first and the third terms would give you 0 okay. and similarly for the third guy, you would only get z, uh, a 1 in the third term and zeros in the first two terms. Okay. So, essentially if you could solve 3 simpler problems, you can solve the original problem by just taking a linear combination okay. and observe this is exactly what we did for interpolation as well because there we solved you know we, we found those polynomials p i's and then we just had to take a, a linear combination of them and that solved the more general original problem. Okay, so, the last step remains is really the following can we solve this problem is this any easier to solve than the, the, the original. Okay. So, it, it often happens that these simpler problems are in fact simpler meaning they can actually be solved by some easier method like in the case of the, the Lagrange interpolation, the finding those p i's is actually very simple because it is 0 at d points and non 0 at only 1 point. So, because it was 0 at those d points, we were able to use the fact that it must have each of them as a factor like each of those x minus x i's would be a factor of, of the polynomial p and so on. So, that greatly simplified the calculation, we were able to quickly figure out what the p i the form the p i must have. Now, here, here is another instance where a similar thing happens, it is actually easier to solve these problems. So, let us just do it by example, since I am sort of really only trying to demonstrate what the, the, the broad idea is in this case. So, here is my example, I will take my point to be, uh, I need 3 points. So, I will take 4, 1, 2, I will take a point P, which is 1, 2, 1 point C which is 1 1 1. So, let us say those are the 3 things that are given and let me see how would I solve, I will just demonstrate how to solve the first problem, how do we find D 1. Okay. So, suppose I want to find, want to find a point D 1 such that let me just call it D such that the dot product of O D with O A, O B and O C is 1, 0 and 0. Okay, I am trying to find a point D which is well has inner product has dot product 1 with O A and 0 with the other 2 vectors. Now, just like in the polynomial case the, the fellows with whom it has value 0 sort of give you a lot of starting you know they, they form a very nice starting point from that you can get quite a lot of information about the polynomial. So, observe here that the fact that it is dot product 0 is well again this requires a little bit of 
recalling what a dot product means being dot product 0 means that this is actually perpendicular to this vector. Okay. So, dot products really mean the following that O d is therefore, orthogonal to or perpendicular to the vector O b and it is perpendicular to the vector O c. Okay. So, this is the property of the dot product that it is really if it is 0 it means the angle is 90 degrees between those two vectors. And so, this vector O d that we are looking for is it is a vector which is perpendicular to both O b and O c. Okay. So, if I have two vectors let us say O b and O c and I am looking for a vector which is perpendicular to both of them, then this vector is given by well the easiest way to get it is by what is called the cross product of these vectors. So, observe O d is perpendicular to both O b and O c means means O d in fact lies along the cross product of these vectors. Okay. So, I will just briefly recall what cross product uh, the rule at least what is called the right hand rule for the cross product. You sort of look at O b and O c and where does it point along you sort of go from O b to O c. Uh, with one's right hand and the thumb points in the direction of the cross product. So, that just gives you an idea of what the, the direction of the cross product is. So, it means that O d is in fact parallel to the cross product. So, in other words it must be you take O b cross with O c is a cross product of vectors and you could possibly you know it could be some multiple of this. Let us call it some multiple m some real number m times the cross product. Okay. So, it, it points out or could point in if your multiple m is negative, but at least what this has done is it is quickly given us uh, a starting point for the form of O d. Okay. So, all we need to do is figure out what the cross product of these vectors is. So, let us do that. So, there is again a the standard formula for a cross product. So, in terms of a determinant. So, I am not going too much into this right now. So, you know hopefully this is familiar if not it is something that you know just as a, a small ingredient which you should be able to refresh quickly. Uh, you sort of write a write a determinant i j k and uh, let us see what are the vectors you write 1 2 1 write 1 1 1 then sort of this is a formal way of remembering what the cross product looks like. Uh, you sort of say it is i times 2 minus 1 and so on. So, I am not getting into the rule itself this is not too important for, for what I am going to do. Uh, let me just write down the answer itself it is i minus k. If I compute the cross product of O b and O c using whatever rule you are familiar with the answer turns out to be i cap minus k cap. So, I know therefore, that O d is some multiple of that vector. Now, which multiple is given by the other condition that I know on O d. I know that O d is supposed to have dot product 1 with O a. Right. So, that determines that multiple for me. So, observe O d is m times i minus k. So, I will compute its dot product with O a and well what is the answer let us do this uh, O a is 4 1 2. Right. So, I have m times i minus k dot product with 4 1 2. So, this gives me so the dot product rule that I just wrote out it is 4 minus 2. So, that is 2. So, I get 2 m and this is supposed to be a 1. Right. So, this tells me that m is half. So, in other words this d that you are looking for is just half of i minus k. Okay. So, that tells you what the, the solution is. So, the point D is So, that is the that is the solution finally, it is the position vector is half of i minus k means that the point is just half 0 minus half right. So, here is a way of solving the, the 0 1 problem you just sort of take the cross product of the remaining two vectors 
and then to figure out which multiple of the cross product it must be you sort of see the dot product with the remaining vector and you know that will tell you what the, the scaling in front needs to be. Okay. So, this is just an instance of, of this 0 1 idea of you know trying to find something which is 0 on everybody except on one fellow on which it is a 1. 